provoking and sustaining revival by engaging in kingdom stewardship. It's not enough to have a revival. It's important to sustain the revival. The word revival is an extension of the word to revive. To revive simply means to bring back to life something that is dying or about to die or something that is dead to resuscitate, to awake. In this wise, we can define revival first of all as spiritual awakening. Spiritual awakening. Awake! Thou that sleepest. Come back to life. Get back to where you were before. I want to quickly remark here that it is not everybody, particularly ministers, that is revived. There are many, many ministers today who, with due respect, are nothing more than empty carcass and decoration on the altar. Carnality everywhere. Wars, empty, weak. There is a difference between being an orator and being an oracle. You can be very sound in oratory. What oration does is to attract applause. But an oracle is the one speaking the mind of God, pricking the hearts of men. May you graduate from being an orator to an oracle. We need to move. Time is running. The end of the time is here. Again, what is revival? Basically, revival is a spiritual awakening. And what is the evidence of spiritual awakening? Brokenness of heart. Brokenness of heart. There are many who are not broken in their hearts. Contriteness of spirit. What other evidence of spiritual awakening do we have? Repentance from sin. Repentance from spiritual slumber. And I want to quickly say this. This must begin with us ministers. Genuine repentance. Today, the word repentance is no longer in the vocabulary of many. We rather use confession of faith to cover our confession of sin when we sin. Today, people lie, even at the altar. Exaggeration. You go for a crusade, 10,000 people are there. 10,000 is enough a great crowd. Why must you say it is about 30,000? You are pastoring a church of 1,000. That's great to the glory of God. I was privileged to start pastoring in the church of four people. So if you are pastoring 10,000 to, I mean 1,000 today, man, you should be commended for that. Why must you exaggerate? Let's see, in our church we about... 4,000 people, when you know inside your heart you are only 1,000. Repentance. Repentance. He said, turn ye at my reproof and I will pour out my spirit upon you. One of the greatest and foremost entrance to revival is unconfessed sin. Unconfessed sin. People at the altar have their hands soiled with too many things. Taking what does not belong to you. 
lying down with women that are not related to your wife or that are not your wife. Stealing God's money. We need to come to ourselves. That's why the Bible says in Joel chapter 2, if you read from verse 12 all the way 27, before revival will come, he said we must turn to the Lord with the whole of our hearts. With fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Particularly, he said, let the priest stand before the altar and the people. Let them repent. Let them call upon the Lord. Let them say, spare thy people as they stand between the porch and the altar. Much of what is happening to the church today began from the altar. We must accept responsibility. Co-liberals, co-ministers. In all probability, a sanctified altar will produce a sanctified congregation. What comes to church is as allowed from the altar. If the altar carries fire, it will sanctify the congregation. But for us as individuals, how do you know whether you are being revived or not? How do you know whether you are in a revival or not? Because each person has to examine himself. If you are not revived, you cannot revive people. An unrevived minister cannot revive the congregation. How do you know? How do I know that I'm in a revival? Number one, when your heart begins to pant after God and the interest of his kingdom. I want to repeat that again. When your heart begins to pant after God, not after ministry. Today, many people have left pursuing God to pursuing ministry. You can succeed in ministry and not make heaven. Be careful. If God could use an ass, then he can use any human being and jettison him. Jesus said, when we get to heaven, many shall say, in your name we we'll cast out devils. In your name we we'll preach here and there. And Jesus will say, yes, I had to answer because you use my name. But for you, you are an evil person, move out there to the pit of hell. May none of us end our journey in hell. Yeah. That's why Paul said, after I have done all of this, may I never be a castaway. I pray that none of us here will be used and abandoned. Yeah. So the big question tonight is, how well is my heart panting after God? And I'd like to quickly give you a little test that you need to carry out, perhaps when you wake up tomorrow morning. When you wake up in the morning, what is the first thing you think about? Many of us quickly think of our telephones and think of several things. Now, the way by which you know your heart is panting after God is your attitude when you wake up in the morning. The first thing to think about is God. Let me tell you here, brethren, I don't think of ministry as much as I think of God. Ministry is an assignment. And before your assignment is your relationship with God. If you don't service your relationship with God, you will lose your life and lose the ministry. I think more of God than I think of ministry. Ministry is not my life. God is my life. Ministry is an assignment. I have fought many people who will rather sacrifice their relationship with God and protect their ministry. They are like King Saul. King Saul said to Samuel, he said, please pray for me before these people, the elders of these people. I don't want to lose this throne. Eventually, he lost the people and he lost the throne. When David fell into sin, David said, cast not away 
your spirit for me. Take away the throne. Take away the people. Make me stand alone. Don't let any people bow before me again. But don't take your spirit away from me. Eventually, the spirit of God restored back to him. And the people were restored back to David. Don't die for ministry. Die for pursuit of God. Now, if you watch most impactful men in ministry today, they have this order, this priority. Panting after God. As the deer panted out of the water brook, so my soul longed after you, O oh Lord. Panting after God. Longing for God. That's how most of us started our journey. Many of us never thought we would ever be in ministry. But with a panting heart after God. Thanking God. Talking God. Relating with God. And he's showing today. When your heart begins to pant after God. And the interest of his kingdom. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Number two, how do you know you are in a spiritual revival as a person? When you begin to take pleasure in the things of the kingdom with all your resources, with all your resources, physical, mental, financially, when nothing else matters to you but to use your resources for God, Today, if you check the budget of many ministers and their prayer is how to get a car, how to build a house, how to make a name, how to be recognized in the society, how to be in a class and have a rank that is higher than others. That's all he's thinking about. to take offering from people as a prophet seated in the corner how to use manipulation on people to give that's all he's thinking about when it's time to give offering his hands are empty he said come on everybody lift up your offering his hand is empty and so he remains a beggar for things he's not in a revival In Haggai chapter 1 verse 14, the spirit of the Lord stirred up the people and they went into the work of the Lord. Number three thing that makes you know you are in a revival is when you are consumed with undying passion to see the unsaved saved. To see the unsaved saved. Our primary assignment, like we're going to see fully later, is to love what God loves. To do what he called us to do. The essential, the primary call into ministry is to win souls. To rescue people from the kingdom of darkness and bring them into the kingdom of God. To win souls. I can't imagine me close any service, any church service without making an altar call. What are the people gathering for? They are gathered to come back to God. He called us to the ministry of reconciliation. Second Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 17 all the way to 20. If any man be in Christ a new creature, all things are passed away, all things have become new. And thereafter, he gave to us the word of reconciliation the ministry of reconciliation can I tell you something people of God the moment you stop winning souls you are already dying you are already dying nobody may tell you this but you need to know this if you are not winning souls something is dying in you without knowing A revival 
is a move of the spirit that steers the spirit of men to commit to kingdom advancement. That is the reason why we are talking of revival. To stir up our spirit. To stir up our spirit. From Haggai chapter 1 from verses 5 to 14. You see details of that there. Summarized in verse 14. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel. May the Lord stir up the spirit of somebody here tonight. Governor of Judah. And the spirit of Joshua. The son of Josedek the high priest and the spirit of the remnant of the people and they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. Now, from these scriptures, you discover that revival time is work time. It's no play time. Work. Work. Call to ministry is not called to leisure and pleasure. Call to ministry is called to work. Call to work. Revival is no play time. It is highly demanding, serious business time. How did Jesus start his ministry? Luke 2, 49. He said, don't you know I must be about my father's business? Ministry is business. What is business? Any endeavor for which you are engaged with expectation or profit. Ministry is business. Business demands seriousness. I watch many ministers at the altar just playing, playing and playing and playing. When there are people who are dying insane for us to rescue. Many ministers say, see, if you are too hard, people will not come to church. It's not true. Why are they coming to the churches that go pastor? No compromise. When I make altar call, we call sin, sin. You see, the reason why people are still living in sin is because we are not addressing those things as sin. Somebody lied and you said, it's a slip of tongue. Somebody slept with another person's wife and you say, you know, it's his weakness. He's very weak. When he sees women, his body will be shaking this way. <laughs> when they should slap him and remove teeth from his mouth. You know, you know why and how Joseph escaped sin? How can I do this wicked thing and sin against my God? That's the way we must be addressing evil in the church today. Call it the name. Name it in order to clear it out of the way. If you don't name sin, you cannot tame sin. With due respect to all co-laborers here, if there are things in your life that is troubling you, that is making you to be unfit for this service, you better cry to God. And if you need to seek for help, seek for help. Call for people to help you out of the things that is draining your life. Sin is a sinker. If you allow it, you will end under the waters. Revival time is work time. It's business time. Revivalists of old are laborers. Not casual people. They are laborers who do not live normal life nor keep normal schedule. Every revivalist has one injury or the other. As sacrifices that they made unto God. Thank God it's a joy tonight to meet with our brother, Robert Leadon, who did an extensive work by the grace of God on many generals. But you see, generals began as laborers. You see, many are looking for rank when they have not made their marks. Don't seek for rank you make your mark and your mark will give you your rank most generals we talk about today 
were laborers. They were given to labor. Think about great men like Ora Robert, whom I understand when he goes out for crusade, they can only tell the day it will start. They can't tell the day it will close. And in their time, they must lay hands on people because that's the only way to be sure you receive your healing. They will lay, if you are 2,000, they will lay hand on each person and have morning session, afternoon session, evening session. It's not like today where a pastor will do one service on Sunday and take break on Monday. Not in his house. They go to an hotel. <coughs> yeah, Sunday was very heavy. The anointing was very I'm, I'm, I need to refresh myself. I don't want to die. And how old is he? 35 years old. 40 years old. At the prime age of this man, at their prime age, they will be jumping from one place to the other. No break at all. You are asking why is there no revival like their time? Query yourself. Query yourself. You have the answer. Query yourself. Do you pray the way they pray? Are you disciplined the way they are disciplined? Aren't you chatting and chatting and chatting and wasting your time here and there in the name of ministers association? They know you everywhere to be attending all meetings. But no privacy with God. No diligence at your work. Revival time is work time. Revival didn't jump on them. They worked out the revival. They worked it out. The way you eat and drink and move around every place on telephone. Ch -ch 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 I understand in those days when Kenneth Copeland is driving or a robot, you dare not talk to him. You dare not talk to him. Except he asks you to come. Don't move close. Why? Working it out. In the spirit. Working it out. You are a pastor. Saturday you are watching football. And you are expecting something to happen on Sunday. You are not working. You are not working. And you want things to work. Nothing works without somebody working it. Somebody says, oh, I wish, I wish in our ministry we can have, you know, an auditorium that's as big as this. They don't wish auditorium in ministry. It's when the need arises that the auditorium will be commanded by God. If there were no multitudes gathered under this ministry by the help of God, there will not be need for this auditorium. And you saw how miraculously God built it with speed because God had seen the congregation that has been labored for by the help of the Holy Spirit. Don't wish a rank. Make your mark and you will get your rank. Now I'm emphasizing this because you see many, many have lost out in revival because of laziness. Laziness. Lazy to study, lazy to, lazy to pray, lazy to fast. I see a lot of young people today, 30, 40, they've stopped fasting. Why? I have somebody said, you see, I read the book of Rarobot. He said, minister should rest. And I asked him, did you find out what year he wrote that book? <laughs> he wrote it when he was about 80 years old. How old are you now? They tell you take it easy as a young man. Don't listen to them. They didn't take it easy when they were young. <laughs> young man, if you are here, don't take it easy. Don't take it easy. If you are called to be an evangelist, Monday to Saturday, be in the field. Don't take it easy. Don't take it easy. Work does not kill young people. If it kills, it will have killed us. Taking breakfast before you go for Sunday service is an aberration. If you reach that age, it's allowed. Amen. 
do you think somebody will tell me to take breakfast before I go to church at age 50? Or at age 40, 55? You can't do that. I will cast you out. I'm on business for God. I'm looking for something you are not looking for. Let's get back to work. Let's get back to work. We have played enough. Fire doesn't come on lazy people. Fire comes only on people who are on duty. Let's get back to work. Now you see, Pastor Paul, if we fail to tell the new generation about this, we have failed God completely. Don't wish where we are. Somebody said, you see, I, I wish I can be flying like Bishop Wedeko is flying. Find out where he was in 85, 86, 87. Driving in public transport from Ilone to Kaduna. 83, 84. Coughing and coughing almost dead. Because all through the year 20, I mean 1985, he was in fasting. Virtually every day of the year fasting. When it was 1st of January 1986. <coughs> there is no general without a mark. He may be hiding it under his dress. But for you to become a star without having a scar, you are deceiving yourself. Any gospel that tells you that you don't have to work to make it a ministry is a dead gospel. Let's get back to how our fathers did it so we can see their kind of result. Let's get back. That's all we are talking about in this teaching. Revival time is work time. Revival is for those whose soldiers are prepared to bear the ark of God, not using modern technology. In 1 Chronicles chapter 15, verses 11 to 15, it was being told the reason why things fail to work for them. The priests were to be bearing the ark on their soldier. And they felt, no, we are modern people. How can we be carrying the ark in the open? And so they made chariots. They made a cart. And God kicked the man who was the inventor. Kicked him and killed him. And David was afraid. And went to request or to find out from God, what is the matter? And they said, first the priest must sanctify themselves. And they must carry this thing on their soldier. Listen to me. If this assignment you claim God has given to you does not task you, it cannot make you. Revival is tasking. Revival is tasking. It will cost you something to pay you something. Even in the kingdom, there is nothing free. It's free by availability, but it is not free by possession. You have to pay a price for it. Tonight, I am praying that you will be inoculated with the grace to labor. I didn't hear your amen now. If I pray for you that God will give you 100,000 people, you will say amen. But I am praying that God will inoculate you tonight with the unction to labor. With the unction to labor. Are your soldiers prepared to bear the ark? Revival is for those who are fully available for the master to ride on their back. Is your back available? Have you ever walked to a point where your brain is jamming? Where your waist is aching, yet you want to go to preach? More of times when I'm preaching, I have to hold the podium because of the way the body has been used. They say, go and rest. No, not yet. When they told me, so we go to go and rest. First of January 20, no, 1986. He said, if this is the last one I will preach, let me preach it. You see, those who serve God that way don't lose their lives. Revival is for those who are prepared to drink the cup of suffering. Mark chapter 10, verses 35 to 40. 
two brothers came to Jesus with their mother, a chief lobbyist, to ask that they will be given position. First of all, Jesus said, you don't know what to ask him. Are you ready to take the cup that I am going to take? They say, well, yeah, we are ready. Many are not prepared to drink this cup. The cup of suffering. Whether you like it or not, you can't take suffering from the gospel. Jesus, and Paul said, if we suffer with him, we will reign with him. If we bear his reproach, we will enjoy his glory. If we take mockery from people, we are going to see his making. Man, people mock me. They mock me. When I started pastoring of church of four people, including myself, mockery. Nobody in my relations, you know, among my relations, ask after my word, man. But when they began to hear of the things happening, I began to receive telephone calls. Brother, including those who are not my brothers, when can I come to see you? I said, not now. All my schoolmates who mocked me called us all kinds of names. Some years after, two of them came to me. They said, we are now born again. I said, you came late. You came late. We have left you behind. You came late. And after all the discussion, they brought their CV. What way can you help us? Opportunity for people to mock you is opportunity for God to make you. Has this thing brought you to mockery? Have they abused you preaching from one street to the other? From one corner, from one market to the other? If you are not prepared to suffer for Christ, you are not ready to be glorified with Christ. He said, let us therefore go without the gate, bearing his reproach. God's servant, Bishop Wedepo, told us some stories. When he was growing up serving the Lord, he said one day, he was so much in a hurry to go to preach where they invited him that he ran like an antelope in front of his family house in the village. <laughs> they were, what kind of madness is this? You pass in front of your father's house, you won't even greet them. But today in the same town, a celebrity. The same town. Revival time is work time. Revival is for those who are selfless and not reputation seeking. Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 to 9 it is for those who are ready to decrease for God to increase. John 3 30. It is for those who are ready to decrease for God to increase increase. The reason why God is not increasing among us is because we are increasing ourselves instead of increasing Christ and decreasing ourselves. Self-projection. Self-reputation. Competition of all kinds. They are doing that in that church. We must start doing it here. Looking for name. Looking for fame. Looking for recognition. And paying any amount that you that is required for you to pay. That's what's going on today in ministry. Ministry has turned to many as form fear. Form fear. Today we have the craziness of the social media. Who is following you on YouTube? Who is following you on Instagram? Who is following you on this and this? There is no crime people following you, but are you yourself following Christ? You may be popular and be turned down by God. I must decrease and it must increase. Now, if you check through the gospel very well, and particularly also the epistles of Paul, he referred to a lot of ministry assignment as labor, labor, labor. And the language of labor is I must work. Necessity, not convenience. Today, many of us in ministry are seeking convenience. Seeking convenience. Waiting for a good car to ride before you go to do what you do. Looking for big public address system before you go to preach. Today, I'm on the street. I don't carry too many of a public address system. I just have two microphones, two speakers. All I need is take me anywhere. Mobile speaker. You don't need big time public address system. Life is in faces. Men are in sizes. Use what you have now. Labor. Jesus.
Jesus repeatedly said, I must. Matthew chapter 4 verse 23 to 25, we saw how he went about. He was working for things to work for him. Luke chapter 4 verses 42 to 44, he got to a place, they wanted him to wait there to pass the night. Jesus said, I must go to the next city. I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also. I must. I must. Bring yourself under necessity if you want to make a mark in ministry. If you want to keep revival fire burning on your altar and to spread to others. I must walk. I must walk. Jesus was ministering to a Samaritan woman and they wondered what is it that is making him crazy that he will not even eat? Jesus said, my meat is to do the work of he that sent me and to finish it. John 4, 34 to 36, I must. John 4, John 9, 4, I must walk the work of him that sent me while it is day. I must. Paul's example, necessity is laid on me, woe be me if I preach not the gospel. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16. Philippians chapter 1, verse 21. For me to live is Christ. For me to die is gain. Such commitment. Necessity. Necessity. Anything not done out of necessity can never produce. Necessity. And that's what we are called to. We are called to labor. And the language of labor is I must. If your language is I will, you may find yourself under procrastination. But if it is I must, all your brain cells will come alive. All your spirit being will come alive to work. May you receive fresh baptism into the spirit of labor tonight. <laughs> Let me quickly say this. If God does not call you to start a ministry, don't venture into it. If you are working in a system under a leadership, don't get angry, react to go and start your ministry. If you start it by yourself, you run it by yourself. If you want to understand what I'm talking about, look at me here. By the grace of God, the last 40 years, I've been working with and under Bishop Oedipo. Why? God called him. God called him and sent me to him to work with him, to work under him. And by the grace of God, you can't deny the impact today. Ministry is not about your number, but your function. Your function. Therefore, let every man abide in the calling wherein he is called. We are in the days of visions and revelations, of course. We are ministries will rise from ministries. But let it be a true rise, not a reaction. Not a struggle. I want to be like him. Not that, oh, my friend started ministry. I want to also go and start. If God does not call you, you will end in a corner. If your caller is not with you, you will end in a corner. If you don't have a sender, you will be sent back. If you don't have a backup, you will have backbone breakage. I'm saying this because people are watching all over the globe. And many of us seated here, let every man abide in the calling wherein he is called. If he calls you to start a ministry, why not? Why not? And even if he does, make sure you receive the goodwill of the house. When the Lord called Moses, he went back to Jethro. Jethro, the Lord has spoken to me. And Jethro said, go in peace. Everyone that God called received the family goodwill for them to go. When the Lord called Paul, 
he took the right hand of fellowship of the brethren. They gave him goodwill for him to go and succeed. These are simple cultures that people have taken for granted. Yes, I'm anointed. He's anointed. I'm anointed. You are making a mistake. Anointing will be the same level. Anointing is not the same level. It differs from one person to another. When Aaron was cornered by Miriam to say that they are also anointed, the Lord says, shut up. If there are prophets among you, they are in classes. There is none of you in the class of my servant, Moses. The one with whom I speak mouth to mouth and face to face. I talk to all of you in dreams and visions, but I talk to him mouth to mouth and face to face. I know my level. I know my limit. Having worked with his servant for over these years, I know my limit. I know my level. I don't cross the boundaries. And that has given me safety. I don't envy him. I don't covert what he has. I camp behind him, watching the steps he takes. And as I take similar steps, I get similar results. That's why there is no blessing that God has given to his servant, Bishop Oedipo, that he has not given me. It may not be the same, but it is in similarity. Including honor and dignity. Who told you you cannot be honored if you are serving somewhere? Who told you? Now, I didn't plan to say this, but I just felt the urge of the Spirit to make this digression. So that you need to be sure of how God is taking you, how God is leading you. If you are not called to start a ministry, independent ministry, stay where you are. Using the opportunities available to build the grace of God upon your life. As I close, remember we have said that revival time is labor time, work time. In all probability, if you are walking with God and walking for God, your fire can never go down. What are the platforms for labor that sustains revival? Number one, kingdom advancement prayer and fasting. Paul, the great apostle, was a fasting machine. First Corinthians eleven twenty seven in fastings, not fasting, fastings. Second Corinthians eleven twenty seven in fastings, often fastings, in weariness, in in painfulness, in watchings, often in hunger and th where there is no food, he turns it into fasting. In fastings, often in cold, in nakedness. He was also a man given to prayer. Galatians chapter 4 verse 19. My little children for whom I travail in bath again until Christ be formed in you. Colossians chapter 4 verse 12 talks about his co-laborer who gave himself to always laboring fervently in prayers. You will never find a quiet maternity have you ever been to one before? For a baby to be delivered, even if you are in the covenant and you are believing God for swift delivery, there will be a moment when you will shout. Ah! Ah! Because there cannot be delivery without a travail. In the same way, revival cannot be bad and sustained without crying in prayer. Today, we don't have wet eyes again in prayer. Today we don't have people screaming again in prayer. That's why revival is getting farther away from us. We need to get back. The first church was a loud praying church. If people are not complaining about your church in the neighborhood, perhaps the church is dead. Every church that is in revival always have complaining neighbors. Oh, they are making noise. Oh, they are praying too much. Oh, they are blocking our traffic. Oh, they are doing this. There is no gentle, quiet church. Every revived church 
generating heat spiritually is a laboring, praying church. Only groaning church will end up as growing church. Only groaning ministers. A number of times till now, when I, even when I lay down on my bed, I find myself crying inside. I'm looking for something. I'm looking for God. I'm looking for revival. Something burning on my inside that puts me on my knees before I know it. That makes me to lie on my floor before I know it. You must give yourselves to prayer. Fervent prayer. You can't pray a baby prayer and expect an adult result. There is no baby that is taking Sterilac that can finish the Sterilac and go and carry, you know, a cement, a bag of cement. You need developed muscle. Many of us want to see great things, but we are doing little things. Praying, fasting. Any technology that wants to take the place of fasting, you must reject it. Any lesson that tells you you must be taking a cup of tea when you are fasting is a deception of the devil. If you are fasting, fast. If you don't want to fast, don't fast. Especially young people. Look, if you don't maximize your youth, you will cry when you become old. Maximize your youth. Some of us are seated here, you are just starting ministry, and food finished in your house, turn it into fasting. It's not new. As a young pastor, there was a day food finished in my house. Many of us don't know the stories. Food finished in my house. There's no time to tell you what I did. To improvise for the food. Sleeping on mattress. Laid on bench. No bed. One pair of shoes. One coat. No podium. No table. I was a bench man. Everything I had in my room, everywhere, was church bench. No air condition. No fridge. Nothing. Yet excited. They said, Does he want to kill himself? <laughs> if you miss this as a young man, you will not be able to jump when you are old. I thank God. I did I maximize my use in ministry again I want to say to you when they take tell you take it easy don't listen don't take it easy take it hard only those who take it hard will fly it high hallelujah so engage in prayer and fasting you see many people don't know that prayer and fasting is like spiritual investment if you see someone in ministry today at age 70 that is eating before he went to preach, don't copy him. All. Don't copy him. All. As a young man, don't copy him. All. He has paid his due. Now he needs to be relaxed. Because there is a time you have to eat for strength. As a youth, you eat for pleasure. As an old person, you eat for strength. Before that time comes when you'll be eating for pleasure, deny yourself. Eating, I mean, before that time comes when you pray, eat, be eating for strength, deny yourself eating for pleasure. Prayer and fasting is one thing the devil is using to take away the power of God from the church today. Get back on it, it will make a difference in your life. What other platform do we have? Sustaining revival, and I close soul winning, soul establishment, soul in gathering. Revival time is massive in gathering of souls. But because of the intensity of evil outside, you need intensity of the spirit to break the forces of darkness. You need to physically go to the field. If we don't go out, we cannot bring them in. You can sit down in the church expecting people to come in. Jesus said, go to the highways. Go to the edges and compel them to come. Go and compel them to come. Today, by the grace of God, there is no week I don't go out. 
at least once every week. Go to the marketplace. Go to the street corner. Go to the highway. Go to the edges. Go to brothels. Go to drinking joints and sit down with the drunkards. And when I go, I bind the spirit of Bruku to here. We are in spiritual warfare. Don't take it as leisure. You can preach fine gospel. And they will clap for you and say, Pastor, we enjoy your preaching. But enjoyment of your preaching is not as important as the conviction and the pricking of your hearts. Let's get back to duty. Church on mission is church that will live forever. Church on mission. Now statistics shows that every church that is thriving today is church that is promoting soul winning, soul establishment, and soul in gathering. Soul winning, soul establishment, soul in gathering. The greatest of God's power is made available to people who go to preach. He said, go ye, and as you go, I am with you always. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God. Gospel bearers are power carriers. If you want to continue to see power in your life, if you want to continue to see revival in your life, be on the go. All of this account for the labor, labor in ministry that sustains revival. Labor. Stop looking for coats to wear. Stop looking for shoes to wear. Stop looking for car to ride. You are not a showman. You are not a showman. John didn't have good dress to wear, yet people came to him from everywhere, including soldiers, begging him for their salvation. I'm not saying you shouldn't dress well, but don't go for it. Don't go for it. If I tell some of you here now, when last I bought a coat, you'll be surprised. More than 20 years now, I've not bought one coat for myself. I'm pursuing what God sent me to do. And he said, all these things shall be added to you. Stop pursuing car. You don't need car. God said they'll be added to you. The last 13 years, I bought only one car. Where are the cars coming from? Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things. All these things. All these things. Including credit card. All these things shall be added to you. All these things shall be added to you. Ask our host the same story. The same story. Not looking for what to eat. Not looking for what to wear. Yet things never stop following after us. Do what you see us do. And you will see the wonders that we see in our lives. That's the summary of the message tonight. How many of you will work? How many of you will work? A few Saturdays. I will call my attention. To show me. Pastor Paul. Preaching crusades in the neighborhood here. Sometimes you see 100 people there. Sometimes you see 50 people there. Yet, working. How? That is what we are called to do. You stop working, things will stop working. You stop working, revival will stop. How many of us want to receive the baptism of the spirit of labor? The spirit of servanthood? You have done enough of master. It is now for you to come down to the level of a servant. You have done enough of a lord. It's now time for you to come down bend your back to walk and God will make you to rise to lead you have looked for rank enough now start making your marks in ministry by walking and walking and walking and walking now receive the grace receive fresh baptism to labor in the name of Jesus rise to your feet with me everybody and raise your voice and begin to call for the baptism of labor right now Call for the baptism of labor upon your life right now. In the name of Jesus. Call for it right now. For the baptism of labor. Receive the grace to stretch. In order for you to spread. Without a stretch. There cannot be a spread. Receive the grace. 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 In Jesus precious name. We are prayed. Now listen to this, Jesus speaking, Luke 12, 49 to 50. He says something amazing there. 
I am come to send fire on the heart. And what will I, if it be already kindled? Verse 50. But I have a baptism to be baptized with. And how am I stretched? Stretched. Stretched. Till it be accomplished. Accomplished. Stretched. Without a stretch, there cannot be a spread. You have to stretch. Jesus was stretched. And we can see the effect of it all around the globe. Concerning Jesus also, it was being said, a body has thou prepared me. I'd like you to pray for that kind of body. The body that does not get easily weary. The body that does not, you know, that does not entertain sleep and slumber. There are many slumbering pastors, many slumbering ministers. You can't study the word of God. You preach for 20 minutes, you are tired. You need to pray. Father, give me the body that will sustain this assignment. Give me the body that will sustain the assignment you have given to me. I receive the fresh baptism of, to stretch in order for me to pray. Somebody pray that prayer right now. 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 Call for the help of the Holy Spirit. Give me a body that will fit this assignment. Give me a body that will fit this assignment. Deliver me from the spirit of slumber. Lord, let my body, my spirit, my soul be revived tonight. Somebody pray. Give me the grace to stretch, to stretch, to stretch for me to spread. No more limits around me. No more limits around me. Somebody pray. Pray that prayer right now. In Jesus' precious name. Finally, will you pray? Everything that is tampering with revival fire inside me, burn them off right now. Holy Ghost, burn them off right now. Fire of revival, come upon me afresh right now. Somebody pray. You are at the altar of prayer, the altar of fire. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Can I request you to please lift up your hands? Tonight, by the grace of God which he has given to me, I'm building on existing grace on this altar that is at work in all ramification. I release upon everyone in this assembly grace to labor in ministry grace to labor in ministry receive it in the name of Jesus every spirit of slumber every spirit of laziness every spirit of procrastination I command that they be destroyed in the name of Jesus. I release upon everyone fresh zeal of the Holy Ghost. In the precious name of Jesus, so shall it be.